What is up, everyone? Welcome to episode 212 of the Fi Library. I'm your host, Blaine Henry, and today we are talking UFC 268, Colby Covington and Kamara Usman's rematch, and it was a banger of a fight. I didn't pull my notes up before I started recording, so I'm doing that now. That's why I'm looking away. There I am. My notes are now in front of me. So, yeah, uh, before we get into this episode, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for listening. Please drop a sub, like, review, comment. It's great for the podcast channel thing. Uh, if you want to support me even further, I got a deal for you. Five bucks a month on Patreon, and I give you exclusive content only Patreon members can get every week on Mondays. And this week we're talking about Canelo. And his legacy on the sport. I'm also going to drop a Ryan Garcia technical readout tomorrow. So it'll be two exclusive things tomorrow. Get in it. Anyway, so let's go ahead. Let's go and dive on into this UFC 268 card. I'm going to start from the bottom with Alex Pereira. He fight Andreas Michelitis. I don't know how to say his last name. And I'm sorry. Anyway, so you know, Pereira, he's opened up with the low kicks. And Andreas almost immediately shoots for the legs. Like I'm Not immediately. Like, you know, ding, ding, bell rings, leg shot. Uh, he kind of... You know, he, he shot for the legs, and Pereira kind of didn't know what to do to get up on the ground. You know, he kind of fence-walked a little bit, but there's some work that needs to be done there. His training partner is Glover Teixeira, though. Why does he not know how to grapple a little bit? Anyway, so yeah, um, Andreas isn't even a good wrestler, and he managed to push him to the fence. I was losing my mind because I was like, come on, are you serious, Pereira? So bell rings round one. I'm like, great. This dude's going to bust, and there's going to be nobody for Izzy because, yeah, I don't think he's going to be even a threat to Izzy. But round two comes in, and Andreas comes for the hips and flying knee. Bink! Like Alex Pereira has done how many times? <laughs> Guy does this all the time. I mean, that dude's explosive and powerful. So it was great. I was really happy to see Pereira move on to 5 0 in the UFC, which you don't see often. We saw it with Cyril Gaon. I think they like these glory guys. Um, you know, Izzy. Cyril Gunn. There's a bunch of them that they have. I think Dustin Jacoby, maybe. Don't remember. Uh, but yeah, so great win. Uh, TKO round two. But the main event was the very next fight. Justin Gaethje versus Michael Chandler. Whoa. <laughs> what a fight. Fight of the year, for sure. There's no doubt about it. This is the best fight in any sport we've seen all year long. Um, Chandler looked really good early too, man. He was he was quick and giving Gaethje problems. And somebody pointed out that Gaethje has a problem with fast strikers and alluding to his UFC debut against Michael Johnson. I can't say that because after he moved to Trevor Whitman's camp, or he listened to Trevor Whitman because he's been there all the time, um, he's changed as a fighter. And Gaethje kind of got away from that this fight. Started to brawl, and it was great though. Let's be honest, it was, it's why we love Justin Gaethje. It's also why we love Michael Chandler, because Chandler's been doing this for a while with Pitbull, Eddie Alvarez. He's done this with everybody in Bellas, or he comes over here, and he does the exact same thing. I mean, think about the title fight. Charles Oliveira and him had a great first round where Chandler dropped Oliveira, and then, bang, Oliveira kind of hurts him at the end of the first round. So, Ch first of all, how hard does Oliveira hit? We don't think of him as a hard hitter. I mean, recently we do, because, you know. Anyway, so... You know, the second round comes and and Chandler's hurt. You know, he he's tired. Both are gassed at three minutes of the first round. But yeah. So anyways, Chandler's shooting on the hips, and we see that yeah, Justin Gaethje can't stuff a takedown. It's just that he was fighting Khabib. <laughs> People started to doubt this man's takedown defense, and he was fighting Khabib. Nah, Big L. Uh, yeah. So no footwork, no jabs, nothing from Gaethje. Just bombs. And Trevor Whitman, like, wears him out in the corner. Round two, Gaethje and Chandler are both settled in more. And Gaethje starts setting this rear uppercut. And then, like, ten seconds later, he does another rear uppercut. Same same punch. Um, just a right uppercut from the rear. And it knocks down Chandler. I'm like, oh, this fight's over. Nope, Chandler survives. Gets his head underneath Gaethje on the on the shoot. And it was beautiful. Uh, DC said Bellator on the on the show. And Joe Rogan would say it later in the, in the card, too. I was like, is in Bellator. You know, you see, really kind of doesn't like that. Uh, I poke from, you know, whatever. Bell rung. Um, Chandler looking quick early in round three. And then, you know, second win, but then Gaethje starts, he catches Gaethje coming in. 
hooks to the body, Chandler found. I wish he could have done that earlier in the fight, you know, especially when in the early beginning instead of hunting his head. You know you get tired, bro. I mean, why why wouldn't you go to the body? It drives me nuts. But Gagey didn't like it. Um, Ch- Chandler did shoot in on the hips and slam Gagey, but Gagey, like, cartwheeled up or something. It was a great scramble, and he ended up on Chandler's back. Um, Chandler kept telling Gagey to come on, and he points to his hand, and I think he broke his hand. Uh, but, yeah, he survived the fight. Again, how hard does Charles Oliveira hit? How precise? It's got to be precision. That's what it is. Uh, Billy Quarantillo, uh, Quarantillo versus Shane Burgos. Good fight. Um, you know, Quarantillo, Billy comes in with a lot of volume, and Shane Burgos is pretty clean. And this is the fight where Joe Rogan said Bellator. It was in round three. Go back and listen. But, uh, you know, he's throwing a lot of volume and kind of overwhelmed Burgos in the beginning. But eventually Burgos settled in, starts feeling himself. Billy, he, he's got some cool, like, heel hooks and stuff he was trying in there. I didn't think he had that, but he did. Didn't really, you know. But Burgos, he really he worked the legs, and it really paid off for him with uh, later in the fight. Uh, Cheeto Vera and Frankie Edgar. Uh, UFC wants Frankie, and I mean, UFC wants Cheeto Vera to be very good very badly. After he beat Sean O'Malley, they want a reason for him to be great. And they tried to match him up against Jose Aldo. Didn't work because Aldo's still good. Uh, he's better at Cheeto, what Cheeto's good at. Frankie, on the other hand, he's a little bit more washed, and we saw that. Frankie got the fight to the ground in the first. Cheeto was kind of happy to be on the ground. Um, he just kind of stayed there. And that happened in the second round, too. He kind of just stayed there. Uh, whatever. Uh, so, uh, round three, you know, Frankie goes for a leg, and Cheeto, like, peels him off. And then he pulls the old Anderson Silva front kick to the face, knocks him out. Frankie didn't like it, but whatever. <laughs> um, co-main event, Rose Namajunas and Wiley Zhang. Wow. Good fight. Both fighters fought completely different this fight. Wiley was at a distance, bouncing back and forth, whereas Rose was kind of like, oh, what's going on? This is a little different. Um, we know straight punches win every time, and uh, Rose done that, did that, and she did a good job. I thought Wiley won the fight with the takedowns and such, but Judges didn't see it that way. Fair play to Rose Namajunas. Even though I don't really care for her as a person, she's a really good fighter, man. Like She's technical. Uh, straight punches, kicks off the end. She's varied. Um, good grappling. Takedown defense, a little sus. Uh, Carla Spars is the next in the line, and that could be bad. She needs to go to wrestling practice every day. Because if Wiley Zane can take you down, Carla Spars will do it more. Um, you know, Rose kind of, Knocked Wiley down. Uh, Wiley kind of stunned Rose. Great fight overall. Um, but I just, it was, everything was kind of just bleh after the Gagey Chandler fight. It was still good fights though. I liked it. Main event though, Kamara Usman and Colby Covington too was the second rematch. Uh, Zhang and Namajunas was the first. Anyway, so first fight, Colby got knocked out in the first round. And I said in uh, on my MMA news, I'm going to put the picture of it right there. Said on my MMA news that Colby Covington needs to go to the legs more. He needs to kick. And I look, uh, he, could, he will probably come and wrestle more. And he came and wrestled more. He looked like he wanted to kick more, but he didn't. So, yeah, um, Covington's tough, man. Like him or hate him, he's tough. And Kamaru Usman's the best MMA fighter in the world. Period. Hands down. So Covington, you know, he throws a late kick early, but he kind of just abandons it. I'd like to see him go to the body more, but Usman was trying to catch the kick too, so I kind of see what he's doing there. Um, you know, he did try the Ma- Colby tried the Masvidal shift where he shifts his feet and then comes in, but you know, Usman he got, got him down or he gets Usman uh, whatever uh, somebody went down. <laughs> Usman couldn't keep Colby down. That's what it was. Um, Covington threw a high kick and catches. Usman with a good check hook, uh, you know, the lead hook, pop over the top. I can't remember if he was a southpaw or orthodox there because Kobe switches a lot. Um, and Kobe starts shooting the hips, and Usman grabs a hell of a whizzer, and, like, the dude's arm is, like, behind him, and it's like, oh, that's how you uh, peel somebody off of you and make it uncomfortable. And it was super uncomfortable for Kobe Covington. So, yeah, he, uh, Usman, he's, he, he dips his head straight down, like, 
he's looking straight down at it. I'm like, man, he needs to quit doing that. And sure enough, Colby picks up on it, and he starts throwing that big old uppercut. You know, we saw him throw it that entire fight. He Hadouken! But it starts landing, and Usman starts getting wobbled. It was a great fight, though, man. I'm telling you. Um, oh, Covington started to slip and, and, and find the jab, too, later in the fight. So Usman's real good with the one, two, and then he throws kind of like wild hooks. And Covington, like, picked up on it. He's like, whoop, pow, pow. Whoop, pow, pow. It was great um, to see him do it. I would like to see him do it earlier in the fight, but I think he was power wary of Usman, which, right call. But, yeah, so end of the round four, I think. Yeah, round four, Colby wobbles it. And I had it 2-2 two, two going into that fifth, just like the first fight. But, yeah, judges didn't see it like that. Anyway, so round five, Usman kind of just takes over. Um, I poke 40 seconds left. And then the two guys talk after the fight, and they kind of kiss and make up. And then Colby doesn't kiss and make up in the pressure. It's weird. So, yeah, great fight. I'm excited to see that. I'd like to see Usman and Leon Edwards and then Masvidal and Colby or Diaz and Colby or Chemayev and Colby. It's three good fights for Colby out there. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to call it a day. Wife needs me. we got to go to the mall and eat because I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, I'm out. Thanks again, guys. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on everywhere. Fight Library, Blaine Hinder, TFL on Twitter. Also, Patreon, Fight Library, five bucks a month, and you can buy my wife a coffee. I'm out.